The Devil Special Heroes banner is back for April 2024. The schedule for these things are getting more and more unpredictable as time goes on. Today we'll be doing a quick overview of the eight seasonal units available. Returning before further official reruns, we have Summer Fjarm and Dual Winter Violets in red, Winter Edelgard and Dual New Year's Sather and Hather in blue, Tea Time Ferdinand and Ninja Reina for green, and then Winter Yunaka and New Year's Nerthus for colorless. We have some spicy groups this month. In red, Summer Fjarm is a high speed sword master who takes on a godlike -like reflexes type playstyle by having her own unique defensive special. Her sword provides slaying, a lot of stats, guard, LC disrupt against ranged foes, and 5 flat DR when defensive specials trigger. This Fjarm's unique defensive special is a 1 cooldown special that reduces damage by 10% versus melee or 30% versus ranged. Like Ice Mirror, Fjarm reflects back the damage reduced with her next counter. She then also gets this encounter if the special is ready entering combat. This will mean Fjorm depends on Times Pulse 4 for consistent DC uptime. Her unpersonable DR isn't a ton, so she still is depending on something like Spurn Force Dodge to stack with. Attack and Speed Finish is a solid stat booster for the quick recharging special playstyles. Like other high speed units, Fjorm would love a no follow up like effect. Our second red unit is Dual Winter Male Violet and Female Violet, and they're a low speed armor with a sling. DC, Nelsie Disrupt Sword. Again, Nelsie Disrupt is for ranged foes only. Bonnet also gets a bunch of stats, no guard, and has a scale effect, except instead of plus one cooldown, it scales with movement used when initiating. If Bonnet uses Savior, this is plus three cooldown. Basically, if you do not outres this Violet, you're probably not going to get a first hit special proc. Now to counter, Violet has Supreme Heaven, which charges in one action. Like Sublime Heaven, it's a DR piercing special that is stronger against beasts and dragons. It then has Armored Flow and Beacon type, unpierceable 30% DR. For extra percent damage reduction, we can fight our ants 80 or 40% DR. They have Far Save naturally, and Fire Flip Boost for extra HP, res, and potential guard. For some extra defense, their dual skill provides 80% damage reduction against AoE specials, plus 60 percent res, and Hexblade. But it also neutralizes armor effectiveness for that turn. Summer Fjorm and Dual Winter Pilots are fun units, but still available on the first date this banner is out is Emblem Ike. He also has a DC plus NLC Disrupt Sword, and if you get Ike, you also get his Emblem Ring effect to play around with. Regardless, this red group does have great skills to chase if you need them. An armor unit can take Bot's whole kit relatively easily. Next up, the blue group has Winter Edelgard, Lance Armor who may not be super bulky, but has a player phase initiator role. Her Lance has a built-in flared ace effect for deploying flame tiles, except it's two rows of fire. It has slaying, inflicts debuffs, and grants instant cooldown based on distant moves, up to minus three cooldown. If the foe is on a flame tile, it's automatically minus three. If Edelgard is solo, she gets 100% DR piercing, with lower values if adjacent to an ally. If she has weapon triangle advantage or the foe is on a flame tile, Edelgard disables miracle type effects as well. With her new Raging Storm B skill, she has built in Assault Troop with plus one movement. It can grant another action if you initiate next to one ally or fewer. Armored Blaze is the melee bonfire special with unpersonal damage reduction. Edelgard can't naturally proc Attack of Demons Prime 4 for distant counter, but it's there as a bonus. She also isn't a crazy high res stacker, but from pure armor BSD, she has the Eternals Ploy 3 to tank those low res foes. If you want a unique Gale Force type unit, this Edelgard can rack up those extra actions while still being a threat. Our second blue unit is Dual New Year's Sather and Hather, a blue flying mage. Sather's Mythic Cisco got a huge buff being active every turn with an easier res check. She can prevent foes from moving and inflicts Time's Grip which prevents units from supporting their allies. For combat, Hather provides her support effects. On turn 2, Sather gets Kanta 1. Turn 3, it's Treachery True Damage. On turn 4, win a res check for Brave Attacks. This is on top of slaying, lots of stats, a free follow-up, and Sather still gets her teammates a follow-up to now status with attack and his field boss. To be dangerous early on, before turn 4, if the foe has times grip, Sather treats the turn number as 4, meaning all of Hather's effects are already available. If the foe doesn't have times grip, they can use their dual skill to give times gate, which can also activate Hather's bonuses. Times gate can turn the user into a war beacon, and the dual skill can give this to the whole team. Suffice to say, but this duel is very annoying if you do not account for all those effects. For fodder, Sather will have sabotage speed and res 3, a variant only on her. She also has remote mirror for 30% DR on initiations. The blue group may have some unusual skills for inheriting, but these two units are definitely good all on their own. For green, we have two 4 star focus units. First is T-Temp Ferdinand Bon R. He's a flying green mage with good attack and speed. 
birdies inherited with T times set plus grants console 1, plus 5 attack and speed, and if you outspeed, you get offense and a fall up. This lets fast mages like Ferdy run something like Windsweep to prevent counters while still doubling. Definitely one of the more interesting and viable inheritable green tomes if you don't have the arcane option. For other skills, Ferdy has speed and res rain 3, that could upgrade to the new crux tier 4. He then has rally speed and res plus, which can fit the new young Frederick's attack and defense and bonus dollar support. Our next 4 star focus is Ninja Reina, a green flying archer. She also has great attack and speed stats, and her Kumoyumi is an inheritable brave bow, with plus 4 dollar stats and gives the regular 2 range warp to move around. It's a solid brave bow option. For other skills, Reina has speed and defense of Reign 3, that can upgrade to the snap version which is in the normal 5 divine code shop. Attack and speed catch 3 is good, but it is on Zephyr as a free to play source now. Overall, green is obviously not the most valuable, but these are both 4 star focus units with decent heritable weapons. Reigns also have a bunch of tier 4 upgrades. Last up, Kalas has Winter Yunaka. She's a high speed dagger cavalier with Kanto distance, meaning if she moves through spaces, she gets Kanto 3. This lets Yunaka get in, assassinate a target, and get out. For killing power, she has Sling, lots of attack and speed, offense in a follow up, and no guard. She also gets DR piercing and percent DR based on distance move. This scales up to 3 spaces move for a massive 90% DR piercing on every hit and 90% DR for uh, first attacks. If Yunaka is near a divine vein or difficult to rain, she automatically gets the 90% values. Essentially, Yunaka benefits from having other Divine Vein units, such as Edelgard, or she can punish Divine Vein units like Brave Corrin. On top of massive DR piercing, Yunaka brings the Flared Strike combo and is the only unit with Assassin Strike, the Poison Strike Tier 4 for physical units. You then got Fatal Smoke 4 to break up any Christmas miracles. Even if Yunaka fails to carry Phil, she has a lot of percent DR herself and can retreat very far away. Very open to DR piercing counters, but boy is it bad if you cannot deal with percent damage reduction effects. Last up for today is New Year's New Thews, Kala's Beast Cavalier with very high attack and speed. Her weapon has Kanto 2, Sling, bonus stats for higher Kunal specials, no follow up, and flat DR based on speed. Her Mythic Beast skill has 40% DR to combo with, and also includes reflected damage on counters based on damage reduced. It mostly alone, New Thews has no guard and AoE gravity to hit and run. Her ace goes attack and speed wild, which is still only on her. It grants plus 7 attack and speed, breath type cooldown, and 7 HP sustain. It is a beast only skill. For her last fodder skill, you got speed smoke 4 for some added mixed phase speed protection. Similar to Mythic Enthuse, this ult is rewarded for running higher cooldown specials and has the cooldown perks to do so effectively. She can be a fun Gale Force user, and you could add flared flame tiles on top of the AoE gravity for more lockdown. If the foe cannot deal with percent damage reduction, Nerthuse is also decently sturdy, her flat DR scaling is quite high, and she has multiple percent DR effects if transformed or if Sweet Smoke's dodge is active. All in all, very solid colorless group, two great units, and Yunaka's skill set is easy to inherit, and kind of just an incredibly annoying combo you could technically throw onto any unit. If you're a fan of beast units, I would say Nerthuse's wild ace goes very interesting, Beast Infantry, like Bridal Nyla, who just got a refine, could combo the Bread Tech Kuda with their innate tempo effects. Nyla's refine also has 7 HP sustain, and if you were to pair Wild with something like Counter Roar, that could give a total of 21 HP healed after every fight. Uh, that's a little silly. That'll be it for this month's Double Special Heroes banner. It's a bit of an unusual release this early in the month, but things are generally back to norm after this. If you're watching this the day it's been uploaded, then last call for Emblem Ike. He's making a quick return in May, I believe, though. Still active is A Hero Rises, and then the next New Heroes banner launches in a couple days. Heads up, May's New Heroes banner is in the first half of the month, and that is most likely another Fallen Old group. Would not be surprised to see certain engaged characters on there. For the Motley Banner, we have a Mythic Hero confirmed for April. Now listed on the calendar, but something to consider is Golden Week Surprises. They happened very early last year, and we actually got a Hero Fest banner for all previous 6 Choose Your Legends groups. If you got CYL 7 units you want to merge up, maybe wait a couple weeks to see what is happening. If you're going to be summoning on this banner, then I wish you good luck. We'll be back soon to talk about the next new heroes. See you there.